Welcome your faces to episode number 62 of the series Profit or Loss. I buy faulty electronic items from eBay, attempt to fix them and sell them on hopefully for a profit. We've had a few shaky episodes as you can see from the red minuses on the screen but last episode we managed to make a profit of £99.70 and our current total stands at £181.20. Today I'm looking to cement myself a little bit further into that green profit. Can we do it? With this specific item, I'd say it's a little bit of a gamble. I actually paid a not too much fee of £160 for this Xbox Series X. Condition wise, not horrendous, not many scratches on the front. The sides are actually looking okay. And £160 for this is, uh, is pretty decent. I do, however, have a sticker residue bit here and have noticed that it's been opened before. That was made known to me in the listing. And the reason why I say this console was actually a gamble is because the description states the console does not go past a firmware update screen. They've already taken it to a local repair shop and it turns out to be an SSD failure so i could have totally wasted 160 pounds here but as we know worst case scenario i can just resell it back on ebay as faulty with a little bit more of a diagnostic as to what i've tried so i won't be losing the full 160 i might be able to sell it for 140 or so but i bought it as a bit of a challenge because i've never fixed an ssd issue on a series x as i always say to myself and you enough jibber jabber shush joey and show me what's going on hopefully no bangs no bangs lovely let's plug in the hdmi cable now does it power on Yes, it does. All right, and apparently, again, it gets to a firmware update screen and doesn't do anything. So let's go over to our little game scene. Okay, the console will restart during the update 58%, applying 100%. Do you know what? I mean, I've literally just switched over to this scene, and I think I'm going to have to shut this down pretty much straight away because I believe this doesn't have the correct disk drive in it. Like any other Xbox console, the disk drive is actually paired to the motherboard. And if you don't have it paired, then it can cause an issue with the update. And 58%, I think it's around about 60% or so, which is where it fails. So it kind of lines up and it's step three out of three, which would make sense. And we get the E100. All right. Very interesting. Let's just quickly take the back off here. I just want to make sure the cable is plugged in correctly, because that could be something. Imagine if that's all it was. How's it looking? Oh, <laughs> what? Look. Oh my gosh. I'm actually really happy about this. And you're going to be like, what? Why are you happy, Joey? This is the, the, the SATA cable. So the data essentially. And look, it's been ripped off the board entirely. Hence why it's failing the update. Okay, let's take the disk drive out then. So now I'm just really hoping that this is the correct drive for the console. And I should be able to actually just even take this off. The cable itself should be okay, really. All right, there we go. I've managed to get the end bit off. This is the bit that is cracked. So maybe somebody just inexperienced has tried to unplug the uh, the cable from here. Let's go under the scope and look at the damage here. Just a few little clips to take off so we can get this PCB outside of the chassis. This is the part that you need to switch over to another disk drive, you see. But our problem is on the PCB itself. So we can't just swap this. And we also need to just desolder where we have, it says B and R. Oh, wow, okay. Now we go under the scope. Wow, this is being completely torn off. Look at that. Jeez, okay. First things first, we're gonna have to pull all of these little things out. So I'm thinking as long as this works, just soldering iron and lift. I think going in from the other side would probably be easier. Let's try that. 10 times easier, in fact. Turn that around, how do we look now? Oh, we still got the straggler. All right, let's clear out these ground holes as well. Put some flux on just to help. And the board's pretty thin, so I'm assuming we will just be able to wick this up with no issues. Here we go, let it fly. Yeah, lovely. Quick clean, get that flux off. There we go. A couple more holes, but what I'm gonna do is just turn this around here, just to make our life a little bit easier. Just secure them this side. Slight issue with this one, so I'm just putting some leaded. Use some flux, let it flow. Come in with a wick. That should sort us out, almost. There we go. 
Nice clean this side. My worry here is that I was going to have a load of torn traces because these do not come off easy. So the fact we've got no torn traces, this might be lovely. Now, the good thing about failing as many times as I have is that I've got plenty of donor boards that I can use that won't cost me anything. So the way I'm going to do this part is simply use my hot air gun to heat this area. This will drop our known good port away from the PCB. And then I can use that on the other one, the original. Now, very thin board, so I'm going to go 380 here with the hot air. Now I'm just going to give the connector a little pull. There we go. Lovely. Take the original PCB and now we're just going to slot this connector up into the holes. And now come in with plenty of flux around the area. Going to tack the leg just here. Just make sure that solder flows through like that. Looks gorgeous. Same with this side. There we go. That is now solid. And now each individual pin. There we go. A little bit more flux. Just go over them. And I think that's going to be okay. As always, nice clean with the cotton swab whilst it's hot. Just like that. There we go. How do we look now? Completely flat to the board. Connector all soldered. Looking good. Feeling good. Hopefully testing good. Let's put it back in the chassis and see what happens. Back together, um, kind of temporarily anyway. If this is the only thing that's wrong with this, it kind of also makes me think, why did they take it apart and do the damage that they did? Is there something else wrong with the console? For example, it's not displaying 4K or something like that. Why did they go into this in the first place? Push the power in three, two, one. Head over to our game scene. The good, good news is, is it is still on. It's not a beep on, beep off. And now we just wait and see what happens here. Okay. 72%. Nothing. No image. Is this now going to restart, perhaps? Okay. 86. All right. We have applying down the bottom left. You can see 72. It's, it's slowly going up. 73. On the far right, we have 89%. So I'll give this a good few minutes and then uh, and then update you in a second. But fingers crossed. What an awesome fix this would be for cheap as well. Okay. All right. It's just finished the update. And uh, and it, obviously, as you can see, it's, it's going through the uh, setup page. So again, I'll really quickly skip through this and, um, and just give everything a quick test. And of course, it now needs to do another update set everything up and uh yeah it displays in 4k it gives the option 4k ultra hd it's, it's uh it's a bit crazy to be honest and if i just get a disc and put the disc in i haven't tested this yet so does it work the disc drive actually works mechanically does anything pop up sounds good sounds like it's doing something there we go and it pops up and it installs oh my god i can't believe it this is awesome i'm going to install the game on it properly myself just to give it a bit of a stress test make sure that it's not turning off randomly when playing games all of that good stuff could have been potentially an overheating issue i was expecting it to be a little bit more difficult than that but i am not going to complain the good thing about this as well is it came with the box the controller the hdmi port the power lead so it is going to be a really really good profit for this one so without further ado let's move on to item number two i paid a grand total of 50 pounds for this nintendo switch like, okay, not too shabby at all. Condition wise, looking nice. Few marks on the screen, but nothing horrendous. Analog sticks look in okay condition. Buttons all seem to be fine. Let's check the screws and the port. Screws, okay. Looks pretty promising. Doesn't look like it's been opened before, but this one, same. Doesn't look like it's been opened. Port, ooh. What have we got here? Can't really tell. What is that down there? I don't know. Port itself looks okay. Maybe water damage, potentially. Can't really tell. Let's just clear out the port with a bit of canned air. Has that got rid of our cockroach or whatever that was? Potentially. Might have just pushed it back further into the console, but hey-ho. Has that port been replaced before? But the screws look fine, but you can see the chassis part here looks a little, a little bit stripped. Weird one. I'm fairly confident enough in this to say, let's use the ammeter. There's not enough corrosion for me to not warrant using it. This little device is going to tell me roughly what's wrong. So let's, oh. Well, I can tell you what's wrong is we don't get anything. That port feels ridiculously loose. I'm going to call it now. Maybe somebody has actually been inside this Nintendo Switch and they've done a really good job of putting it back together very sneakily 
We don't have a game card in there. Do we have a micro SD card? No, we don't. I'll take the switch apart and we'll see what's going on on the inside. It's actually looking pretty clean. I've taken the back chassis off, but the water damage indicator sticker that we have down here shows no liquid damage, which is always a bonus. The port itself looks in line, doesn't look like it's been tampered with. I'm gonna use my most favorite tool in the toolbox at the moment. A link for this will be down below in the description. It will be affiliated. This is a USB-C tester and you have iPhone this side, USB-C this side. Sorry, I should say lightning this side. So if I go ahead and plug this in, what it's gonna do is tell me what sort of connections we have on the port and if we get the correct diode readings or not. All right, okay, so where we have 17 and 08 and it says open line, you put it this way, it might be a bit easier. They're absolutely fine. We don't need them on the switch light. Number 20, where we have 0 0.09 is not good. That's for sure. In that area is where I'm gonna to need to pay attention. My guess is maybe like an M92T36 chip or something along those lines. I'll continue taking the rest of the board out the chassis. The port itself doesn't look bad at all. So I'm actually just gonna give it a nice clean. Looks fine with a clean. Does the plastic move around on the inside? Little bit it does, right? That's where we could be having an issue here. Okay, probably gonna to have to change that out then. But let's check around M92T36 and the BQIC. Do we have any holes or anything in the chip? That's one of the things we definitely look out for. I'll test out the fuse as well. Because we don't seem to be getting that 15 volts in, do we? Yeah, we don't have any liquid damage by the looks of it. That's just thermal paste. The port itself, that's just some IPA that I've just sprayed in. But it all looks pretty um, pretty good. Multimeter in continuity mode, which is the mode that beeps when we have a complete circuit. Now, fuse, are you still good? Yes, you are. Fuse is okay. I can confirm. As stated in a live stream recently, M92 should actually be the fuse because this thing never goes. On that note, I live stream over on Twitch as well as YouTube. So if you want to follow me on Twitch, the link will be down below in the description. It does look like there has been some sort of liquid. I don't think that's the IPA that I've just sprayed on the board because it wouldn't be that color. So I think we have, we might have a little issue around here. Look, can you see? Let's just test. So put that on ground. Let's see if we have any shorts. Yeah, there we go. M92. So this side is ground on these caps and this is meant to beep essentially. This side, we are meant to have no beep. But there is continuity, which means there is a short to ground here. These two are connecting to ground. Just test on the CPU cap. We have a good reading of around about 400 ohms. That's fine. But M92 T36 needs to be changed out. And like I said, I'm probably going to change over the port as well, just because I'm not really happy with how that looks on the inside. It does look like it's had some sort of liquid damage in there before. Let's change the port first. Right, here we go. 450 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 50%, which is gonna slowly heat the underside of the board. The reason we don't wanna heat from the top is purely because I have a bit of plastic here for the battery connector. And we don't wanna melt it, because that would be a problem. Right, we're going to do a little tap diddy tap. There we go. We can see it's loose. I just want to make sure that it is okay on the back pins where we have the actual solder, which it seems to be. Bosch, lovely. Now, whilst this board is nice and hot, what we want to do is just get some flux. Make sure we put on our fume extractor because health is wealth. The most important thing. Get some of our flux just on here and here and here. And I'm just going to add some leaded solder. I'm not going to clear out the, uh, the joints here. There's no need. We're just going to simply add to the unleaded that we already have on the board. It's gonna give us a very, very strong port regardless. And then a little bit of leaded on the end of this iron and just go over the pads. There we go. Just like that. Now take this opportunity to clean up the flux because we don't need it around this area at the moment. Less flux is more. That is all prepped, ready to go. Now, before we place another port on, let's just quickly replace the M92 T36. Same airflow and speed, 450 at 50%. The hot air station I'm using, by the way, is an Atten ST862D. Again, if you're interested, link will be down below in the description. And I'm taking this other M92 T36 from a donor board that measures okay. And all I'm simply gonna do is drop this on the board, roughly in the location I need it, which is probably about there. Come off that heat, apply some flux. Not a massive amount, just around the IC. And now we're gonna flow it into place using the same unleaded solder that we have on the board. 
There's no need to go swapping it out. I'm just going to hold that heat. There we go. And it just locks into place. There it is. And that is nice and fully soldered. And I'll show you in a second once um, once all cleaned up. Clear away some of the flux we can whilst the board is hot. We'll make your life ten times easier cleaning up the flux whilst it's hot. That's for sure. I just prep alcohol and a clean with a brush. Now let's take a look around the IC and you should be able to see that it's all connected. That side is great. That side is great. That side is fantastic. That side is also fantastic. Quick measure for shorts around these caps. Seems to be okay. So that's all ground. No shorts. Perfect. Whilst I'm here, I will just check around BQ very quickly because I didn't. Just see if we have any shorts. But we're looking good. Now back over to install our port. I like to tin my port, so what I do is just apply a tiny bit of flux on the port itself. And I'll probably need to add more in a second because I always end up having to add more. Right, should be plenty. A bit of leaded. Just gonna add a bit more flux, and I'm going to go over this with the bigger iron. Doing it with a small one isn't great. And then just soak up any of that flux that we have that might give us an issue inside the port. Just with a cotton swab here. Just dabbing it away. Same story with the flux as what I said on the port. I'm just going to add enough to the board, but not too much. 450 degrees Celsius, airflow speed 50%. Same story here. Rotate that air underneath the board. And we have our pre-tinned port just here. And we're going to drop it on. What we need to do is wait for that solder to wet everywhere, including the pads. And it will go in about three seconds, I reckon. One, two, three. There we go. And that's everywhere. Just make sure those pads are glistening before we put the port on. It looks good to me. Coming in now with the port. Dropping it down. Still moving that air around. Shuffling the port into place. Placing it on the board. Giving it a little tap just to ensure it's fully flat. There it is. That's actually a really good position that I've got it in as well. I got lucky there. So I'm going to keep this heat on the board and just give it a little tap just to make sure. But I think we're going to be all good. Just there. Wiggle it about a tiny bit just to make sure that solder bonds and hold down. And now I'm going to come away off the heat. Hopefully we have some nice secure solder joints. Wait for that solder to become solid. There it is. Perfect. One vital rule. Whilst the board is hot, you give it a clean using your cotton swab. Because that is the easiest way to get rid of flux is when the board is hot. Give it a nice clean. Because what happens if you come in with IPA at this point is you end up pushing that flux into places that you don't want the flux to dry. For example, the battery connector right here. But this is looking like a solid, solid port. But now we've got majority of that flux all off because the board was hot. We can come in with a touch now of IPA. Just give it the finishing touches. How's the back looking? Looking good. We have a little bit of a Mount Everest right here. Sort of situation going on. So apply a tiny bit of flux. Soldering iron. Just suck that up. But there we go. It's looking like a very, very strong port to me. So we've replaced the M92T36 and the charging port. What I'm going to do now is again use this mechanic tester to test the pins on the port. And just make sure we have a full connection between the upper pads and the lower pads. And would you look at that? We do. Again, 17 and 08 is absolutely fine. On a Nintendo Switch normal console, those pads are specifically used for displaying on a docking station. So they're not needed on a Nintendo Switch Lite because you can't put the Switch Lite in a dock. Or can you? So if I now plug our ammeter in, I should see a steady climb and then back to zero. It does that on the first try. That's no problem. Let's try it again. So 0 0.02, 0 0.04, back to zero. There we go. This looks like we have ourselves a working Nintendo Switch Lite, in my opinion. Zero, two, zero, four, zero, zero. The most important question is, do we get a display up here? We're looking for a battery symbol that looks like it's charging. Okay, here we go. Plug in the ammeter. We get something now, we were getting nothing before. 0 0.07. Yes, there we go. Something on the display. 100 milliamps, lovely jubbly. Leave it into charge. Be back with you in a second. And there we have it, fully back together, looking absolutely amazing. 
tiny marks down here on the screen, but you can't even see them when we go to power the device on. Every aspect of it works. I've tested the game card reader, Wi-Fi is absolutely fine, SD card, Joy-Cons, buttons, touchscreen, everything works exactly as it should. In my opinion, two great little fixes. Let's head on over to Sally's spectacular spreadsheet so we can give her the good news. We have a total cost of 160 plus the 50 equaling to 10. For parts, I use the donor board to fix the Xbox Series X and the port for the Nintendo Switch Lite is relatively cheap, 50 pence now. So that's going to be our only cost of 0.5. Sell price because of the Xbox Series X was fully boxed. I'm going to go with a modest 280 pounds here. Newer generation consoles, I say this almost every video now, are just selling for less and less as every single day goes by. But I think I'll be able to get £100 for the Nintendo Switch Lite. So our total sale price is going to be £380, giving us a profit in today's video of £135.30. Add it to our total, 135.30. And now we are boasting a total profit for the series of £316.50. We're slowly climbing that ladder and it's looking great thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this episode i'll leave last week's up here hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you're new have a great rest of your week slash weekend and i will see you in the next one peace